Hi, and welcome to this module on Joins in Q. This is our 12th module in the Fundamentals series, so please feel free to check out the previous modules if you haven't already. In this module, we'll be looking at table joins. We're going to start off looking at some simple table joins using comma. Then we'll look at key joins, and in particular, the left join and the inner join. And then we'll also take a look at our bitemporal joins, and we'll be focusing on the as of join. Now, there are more key joins and more bitemporal joins. Um, we'll just be looking at a small selection of them today, but to see the full list, you can head over to code.kx.com as always, and you'll see we've got um, all of the joins listed here with lots of examples as well. We also cover some of the other joins in our advanced course. So starting with simple table joins, we can use this in the same way we used it on our atoms, lists and dictionaries. So we always used a join with a left hand side with the comma and then joining on the right hand side. So we can do this with unkey tables. And if we have a table called T, let's run that and define that. So we've got two columns, name and IQ. And notice we've got a type on these. So we've got a symbol is the name and along is IQ. Now, if I have a list of dictionaries, I can join that on using comma. And if we just run that above first, we'll see what that is. So I've got this dictionary um, and notice that 12 here is actually a symbol. We, we know that because of this back tick. So when I join that on, so I'm using this notation T on the left hand side, join and then my list of dictionaries on the right hand side. You'll notice while my record has been appended on. So now I have Dobby in the table. It's added in a symbol for this fourth row. And when you check meta on that table that I've created, I now have lost the, the type of that column. So just something to be aware of, no type checking will be performed. Um, so that can sometimes be desirable or undesirable. So just important to be aware of that behavior. Um, we can also join a table to our original table. So in this example above, we had a list of dictionaries. If we go up here and show this original table and also just run a meta on it beforehand, we can double check what that is. So we've got, instead of passing it as a list of dictionaries, we're gonna pass just a table with one row. We join that on. So this here table is actually a symbol and symbol. Then when we do our join onto the table, we see, um, Let's just do this afterwards as well. So we see we've got the new record as before and we again have lost the type, okay? So that's how we can join. Now it's important to note that this has only worked because our column names all match and the keys of the table are the same as the column names. When I change that to IQ2 in the first example, you see I get a mismatch error. So if I change that back to IQ, it's happy with that. So that's something to note, you must have the same matching columns um, and that's with the column names, not necessarily the types, okay? Um, and in this example here, we're just showing that we can also join two key tables using the join operator and any of the matching keys will be um, upstarted with the value on the right and that will overwrite the value on the left. So in this example here, I've got two tables KT and KT1. So I've got three keys and notice I've got the one ending in one, two and three in the first table on the left hand side. And then I've just got the one ending in three and four on the right hand side. So you'll see where I've added in um, three. So three now no longer has one, two, six for Hermione. It's got the value from the right hand side of Z, that symbol. And then Hagrid, which didn't exist in the first table has been appended on as a new row. So when you're joining two key tables, um, you must be aware that if the key exists in both, your right hand side will overwrite the left hand side and where the key doesn't exist in both, it will just give you the full result added on. And that's how our simple comma join works. Okay, so um, have a go with this exercise. Use join to join the following data. So we've got a list of dictionaries here. We're gonna join that onto T. And we want to join it as a single row nested into the table and then also as two separate rows. So have a go with that. And then we'll move on and look at our join with the each both operator as well. So this will allow us to join our tables um, pairwise. And in order to do this, we need to have the same number of records in each table. So if I have a table on the left hand side with three rows and I have a table on the right hand side with three rows and I do join 
each both here on the table, you'll see I've ended up joining these two columns together in a pairwise fashion. Now, if I took away that, it wouldn't work. I'm getting a mismatch error. Remember, we'll get that when our column names aren't the same when we're using the simple join, but when we're using the each both, um, the requirements are different. This is saying I want to join the columns um, of my left-hand side onto the columns of my right-hand side. Um, so you can think of it that you're kind of joining the columns vertically rather than joining the rows horizontally with the simple join. Okay. Now, if we wanted to add a column that was the same value, so for example, it was a constant, um, we could add a dictionary here. And rather than using each both here, we're going to use each left. Remember this from our iterators module when we have the backslash, so it's leaning to the left, that means it's each left. And if you remember, that's really saying that we want to take each thing that's on the left hand side and apply it to my entire right hand side. So I'm taking each of these rows, so A, B and C, and I'm going to apply the entire right hand side thing to that. So if we see, we now get this constant value added to each of the three rows. Um, so if this notation is new to you or this, um, you can head back to our iterators module and get a more in-depth introduction to our iterators. Um, when we use this method above here, um, and we have columns that are actually the same names, you'll see that they're just overwritten with the right-hand side. So if that's what you want, that's fine. Um, sometimes that can be undesirable. So it's just, again, important to be aware of what happens there. So when these tables are joined vertically with the, the pairwise fashion, when you have columns that are named the same, you'll be left with the values that are on the right-hand side. Okay. Now that was showing unkey tables. Let's show what happens with these kind of joins. They're also known as a sideways join um, when we have key tables. So in this example here, I'm joining um, this key about one, two, and three, and then I've got three, four, and five. So three is the only common key I have. So you'll see I keep V1 from my first result and then V2 is joined in for my second result. And you'll see the only one way I have both is three, which we'd expect, right? Because three was in each of those keys. Um, now, if V1 was named the same, so instead of having V1 and V2, what would we expect to happen? We'll see V1 has just been completely overwritten with the right-hand side. So because we don't have a key in here for one or two, we don't have any values for V1. So it doesn't even keep the 10 and the 20. And you might remember having seen something like this in our dictionaries module. There was a way to tell Q, no, actually, I want to be clever enough to retain those left-hand side values in this occurrence. So if we just show the solution, we're just saying for any of those values where they don't actually have a match on those keys, I want to just keep the left-hand side values. So you'll see here that's actually done a join um, in a pairwise fashion where it's keeping the 10 and the 20, where there is no key matches, and then where there is one, it's keeping the values from the right-hand side. Okay, um, so that's a pretty specific use case, um, but it's good to see the notation um, and be aware of it as well. Okay, so have a go with this exercise. So create the following tables, T1, T2, T3, T3. You can just use this notation and then have a go at using the different kind of joins. And then I'll see you in the next video where we look at our keyed type of joins.